Hey guys, Prince of Macedon here, and I'm going to show you this historical battle based on all the information I just showed you guys. The uh, Siege of Constantinople, 1204, in which the, uh, the Frankish Crusaders and a Venetian uh, maritime force attacked the uh, Christian city of Constantinople. So this is a 1 versus 2 battle. 10,000 florins versus 20,000 florins. I command the, uh, the Byzantines. And I chose a uh, southern European city, a large city, to represent uh, Constantinople. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a map that would show, um, you know, Constantinople by the sea. So I chose the, the Palm Beach map, where you can see some kind of, you know, some body of water on the other side of this, uh, this place here. So uh, Lizzie, 91, commands Venice, and My the Wars commands France. Right now, you can't see their troops because the battle hasn't started. And this is not live commentary, but the footage you're seeing is live. So you're going to see me ordering my troops around. Um, you're going to see some of the chat dialogue. And you're, you'll also see some of the, uh, the internet lag. So right now, my the wards is asking where to uh, move his troops. And I'm just going to tell him you can fight this, this battle the way you wish. But, yeah, so, my army, I have uh, 5,000, well actually I have 5 units of the Varangian Guard, and that was the, the cream of the Byzantine army at this time, and it was probably the only uh, deadly component of their army. The rest of the army consisted primarily of, of mercenaries, because in this time in Byzantine history, the, uh, the Turks had already taken most of the, the recruiting territory that the uh, Byzantines usually, you know, replenish their troops from. So, uh, yeah, at this time, the uh, Byzantine army was mainly mercenary. But in the city of Constantinople, they did have a, 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 a elite force of 5,000 strong Varangian guards who protected the imperial palace. And uh, at this time, the Varangians were composed of, of English and Danish help. And right now, I'm just deploying my troops. So I deployed my elite Varangians on the wall opposite the Franks. And I'm going to put my spearmen in the, the town square. So my strategy here is to uh, meet the Franks here and defeat them immediately. But I wanted to leave the rest of my troops in the, the town square in case the Venusians got behind my guys. So anyways, we're looking at the Frankish army right now. And they have one general's bodyguard. Three experience, five dismounted chivalric knights. That's representing the 5,000 component strong army of the Crusaders. And they had about 8,000 foot soldiers, and I'm going to represent them here with three armored sergeants, two armored sergeants, and two crossbowmen. Three of those armored sergeants have one experience upgrade. And that is the, the general's bodyguard. For the most part, this battle was fought primarily by foot, but there was a little skirmish in which I believe 500 Byzantine. Uh, horsemen fought against 80 uh, Frankish horsemen, and surprisingly enough, the uh, the 80 Frankish horsemen fought off the 500 Byzantines, so it was, that just shows a kind of discrepancy of quality between the two, uh, the, the two uh, forces here. So yeah, the Byzantine army was definitely on the decline, but their 5,000 Varangians were definitely tough. So now we're looking at the Venetian army, and the Venetian army... I'm going to represent them with uh, a catapult, one heavily armored foot unit, a dismounted men-at-arms, and the rest are going to be two Venetian archers, five Italian spear militia, and two armored sergeants. And that's going to represent the fact that the Venetian army was primarily a, uh, a maritime army. So these are basically marines who had landed on this beach here. So my towers are blasting those Italian spear militia. But I don't plan to oppose them at the walls. I'm going to leave my guys back here just to, uh, you know, deter them a little bit. But yeah, the main part of my army is back here confronting these guys. If I deployed all my strength on this wall, then I would have a hard, I would have a hard time going back to meet the, uh, the Venetian threat. So that's why I kept some of them at the town square. So I've got my archers blasting away at these guys. So uh, the Frankish army and the Venetians, they represented the best of Europe at the time. The Venetians represented the best of Europe's maritime power, and the Franks represented the best of their, of their, their land armies. Our 
enemy's ladders have enemy's reached our walls. Ladders have reached the walls. So right there is the sea, and that's the best I can do with this map. I can't really find a map that, you know, that showed Constantinople properly, so hey, it's the best I can do. So now their ladders are going up, and Command of the Franks is, uh, the enemy have ladders at the wars. My The Wars. I'll just we call them Wars, attackers. because that's that's a weird name. So anyways, I have some Byzantine infantry, and some Raging Guards protecting the, uh, the main gate right there. Because they do have a catapult, they will break through. At least I expected it. So now they're climbing up my, my walls here. So in the real battle, the uh, the Franks did come by by land here, and they were met with a huge Byzantine force that actually marched out to, to confront these guys. And the Franks were so they were getting so mauled that they had to recall for Venetian help to help them. And the Venetians, the Venetians came by, by sea and land. They actually breached part of their wall, but they had to go back and assist their Frankish allies because they were getting pounded by the, the main Byzantine army. So it was cooperation that won the day for the uh, Crusaders and Franks. And um, it should be noted that the uh, Frankish army, the Frankish and Venetian army was outnumbered by the Byzantines at this battle, making this, uh, this battle ver you know, much more extraordinary for the Crusader force. Because although the Byzantine army was, you know, on the decline in terms of quality at this time, they still outnumbered the, uh, the attackers, and they were still defending this heavily fortified city. And look at that, we, we burned down one of their siege towers. Pretty sweet action. So I'm bringing my, my cav back to where my Varangians are. And I'm just going to move these guys around a little bit. I'm going to bring back my archers, but I don't really need them. You see this unit right here of archers? I forgot to deploy them at the beginning. So now I'm trying to get them away from the wall here. So now that they're already fighting, I'm just going to let them stay there, hold their ground. It's too late. Sorry. That was a micromanagement mistake. Sorry, guys. It happens. A little funny note, when the, uh, the Crusader Venetian army was coming to uh, Constantinople, they actually showed Alexius IV. That was the, uh, the exiled Byzantine prince. And the people didn't react at all, the Byzantine people. Even though he was probably the rightful heir, they, they really didn't react that, that much to him. E even though Alexius III usurped the throne, you know, they pretty much just accepted him as the, you know, as another legitimate heir, regardless of how he took it. So anyways, I am fending off this wall from the uh, the Frankish threat here. This guy's coming around with his uh, knights. I'm going to move my guys around here. So now I have my cab nearby. I'm going to keep my cab nearby to uh, to charge these guys when they come through the uh, the gates. But I'm just God. So, uh, I mean, this just shows that in a siege battle, you really, it, it is kind of unfair to have equal money for the attackers and defenders because any siege battle like this will always greatly um, favor the defenders. So I'm already, what, 10,000 versus 20,000, and I already split my army in half, and that's still enough to, to fight off this, we must act now. this threat over here. So as they come through the gate, I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to let them come in even more, so I can outflank them right here at this, uh, at this funnel point here. And my horses are just walking right into them. I didn't see that. I wanted to keep them back and then charge. But yeah, you can see uh, there's already some routing French units right there. Archers. Barangian Archers. God. So those are the Frankish troops coming in. Got my general ready. 
I'm gonna pull him back a little bit. Just get him away from, you know, from just walking into those uh, French troops. So, meanwhile, the Venetians are still pouring in, and you can see they managed to get their catapults through the walls there. Was not expecting that. So, I would say for the most part, I've already uh, defeated the bulk of this uh, Frankish army. But I don't want to leave the walls, this wall, until I completely diminish this threat here. But the reason why I focused two minutes of this intro on on that historical intro is it's a really complicated affair how the Siege of Constantinople 1204 actually came about. It was really a, uh, a conglomeration of, of events that led to this. So I got my Vanguard Guards right here, because I do see that those uh, Frankish troops are just waiting in that siege tower. So I want to be ready when they come out. But already I'm pulling back some troops already. To, to, the, to the town square. Latincon. So, um, historically speaking, while all this was going on, the, uh, the previous Byzantine king, Isaac II, who was Alexius IV's father, he was imprisoned. And he was blinded. He was blinded so that he could not be recognized as a legitimate uh, Byzantine king. And he was blinded by his uh, his brother, Alexius III. So eventually, when the uh, when it was you know seen that the uh, the Crusaders and Venetians they really meant business, and they saw that. You know, Alexius III had had actually fled the city. You know, in face of this Crusader threat, they actually installed, uh, they reinstalled Isaac II back onto the throne. And in their eyes, that would have removed the need for Crusader involvement. And here, I accidentally muted the uh, the volume somehow. I don't know how I did that, but I will turn it back on. Don't worry. So I got my my horses ready. I'm gonna I'm gonna pour through through my gates and just start attacking those uh, those crossbowmen. So this is me turning my audio back on. See that the sounds muted somehow. I hope I never hit that button again. So I got my cav pouring out. But yeah, when they finally put uh, when they finally you know released Isaac II from prison, they put him back on the throne. So uh, this finally did please the uh, Crusaders, and Isaac II agreed to uh, rule the throne jointly with his son, Alexius IV. So I'll be jumping back and forth between history and what's actually happening on the screen. So yeah, I am running down these crossbows. I'm using my cab to uh, just chase down these, uh, these Frankish units who are kind of dispersed. But if you look in the distance, you can see that some of the uh, Frankish troops are going around the wall. They're actually going to hook up with their their Venetian allies on the other side. So they have a long march ahead of them. I just want to clean up what I can. But yeah, as I said in the intro, as I wrote in the intro, the I mean, Alexis IV he promised all these things to the Crusaders and the Venetians. But when he uh, when he found out that the the Byzantine treasury was basically depleted of anything, he uh, started to regret making all these promises to the Crusaders and the Venetians because uh, when they came back to collect on the uh, the Byzantine prince's uh, Our promised rewards, we they were kind of act. astonished that he could not provide what he you know what he initially what was uh, proposed to give to them. So eventually, these guys did take the city, they put this guy on the throne, but what ended up happening was the uh, Crusaders and the Venetians had to attack the city again, Our men are under attack. and they they act. removed Alexius IV from the throne Jury. after putting them on there in the first place, Jury. and then they ended up putting their own, one of their own guys on the throne, and then uh, the Crusaders would rule Constantinople for 60 years, it would be uh, known as the... The, the Latin 
the Latin takeover of Constantinople. So it was a very dark time for, for the Byzantines, and also for the Crusaders, because, uh, you know, they got excommunicated. Look at that. Yeah, those guys are going to go to the other side to hook up with the Venetians. But yeah, ironically, uh, the biggest threat to uh, Constantinople was were, were the Crusaders themselves. Our men are under attack. We must act now. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that definitely led to the uh, the huge uh, the huge uh, decaying of the uh, the Byzantine Empire. These guys really tore up Constantinople. That like they they went in for three days. They they raped. They pillaged. Um, the Venetians they had more self restraint. Like they still pillaged, but they they didn't destroy stuff. They they kept the things that they they found. They, like all the artwork, they kept it. Um, but the Crusaders they they burned things. They they found art. They destroyed it, and they were raping. Uh, you know, pretty much anything in the city. It was three days of of some of the the worst kinds of uh, of I don't want to say genocide, but you know, it was a slaughter fest inside Constantinople. So, anyways, I got these uh, dismounted knights at the gates here, so I'm gonna hit them from behind. And because of that little funnel, you know, it wasn't a proper charge. Their lances weren't even down. But I still got them trapped between uh, Varangians and my Cav, so it's only a matter of time before those guys break. And then that will remove the threat of the Franks on this side. And then I can swing all my troops back to the town square to meet the oncoming uh, Venetian threat. Forward. Our men are under attack. We need to act. So yeah, you can see those red flags coming closer to the town square. That is the Venetian threat. They are still untouched by my, by my troops, except for those, um, those few arrows that were launched from my, from my city's towers. So now they're starting to shoot my guys. See that? See my little uh, user interface. My Byzantine infantry is being shot by the uh, Venetian archers. It's interesting to note that the uh, the leader of this uh, Venetian Crusader force was the Doge of Venice, Enrico uh, Dandolo, and he was in his 80s at this time, and he was, you could say he was legally blind, but he was recognized as the most charismatic and the most uh, powerful of all these uh, Western figures, so he led this, this thing here, this expedition. And it's probably one of the most dynamic figures you'll read about in uh, Venetian history. So anyways, uh, there is the general's bodyguard of the Franks. They have uh, successfully hooked up with the uh, Venetians from the other side. But that must have been quite the, the trek coming from one side to the other. Because he had to stay away from the walls in order to avoid getting shot. So anyway, that's a close-up of the uh, Venetian army again. There's the Venetian archers just pouring fire, or arrows, I should, should I say, onto my men. Right now he's hitting some of my, my, my cav. We must act now. Heavy infantry. And I'm still, um, you can see on my, my user interface, I'm still bringing guys back from the other side. They're still walking. Like, I don't want to start this fight until, uh, all my armies united here. Because I, I lost I lost a considerable amount of troops fighting the, the Franks off. And now I'm fighting a fresh army here. Our men are under attack. We must act so here I'm gonna experiment. I'm gonna put my guys into Shieldtron. I'm gonna see if that if that minimizes the arrow damage. And in uh, hindsight, retrospect, whatever, um it, it didn't really work that well. <laughs> I thought the the close formation of the shields would have uh, prevented this, but yeah, you know, they're getting hacked even more. But you know, sometimes you gotta experiment to see, 
you know, j just for research purposes, scientific purposes. Dun 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 dun, dun 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 dun. So yeah, anyways, um, I suppose I would be in this battle. I would be Alexius the Third. That is the the Byzantine usurper, the guy who put uh, the previous Byzantine king Isaac the Second in prison. So that is my position in this battle. I'm gonna fight off this uh, this Crusader Venetian army. That that just crossed the Bosphorus and landed on my shores and attacked me. How dare they? Fellow Christians. So these guys are getting even closer. And uh, this is where my troops still are. They're almost there. Spread out. Spread out. Yeah, I'm definitely bringing up my, my Trezabon archers. Trebizond archers. I want to uh, help absorb some of those archer, some of those um, missiles that those Venetian Our archers are, are shooting attack. at me. We need to act. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring back some of my troops, the ones that he's targeting, like the ones that I, I deem really important. Like he can target my my spear militia, that's fine. But if he targets my Varangian guard, that is a very useful asset that I will need in the upcoming final battle when it happens, the battle for the town square. I had one idea of just uh, charging down the uh, the funnel there. But if I did that, then that would have robbed me of the, the morale bonus of the town square. And because my guys are already low in numbers, I needed the town square to keep my guys fighting regardless of how low and how much lower their numbers got. So it was a strategic choice by me. But I could have caused a mass route fighting at the in the in the streets there of Constantinople. And in case you missed it, um, the intro information that I got, you know, that first two minutes of this video, I took it from this, uh, this uh, history book called A Short History of Byzantium, written by John Julius Norwich. And it's basically a very generalized history of the Byzantines from start to finish. Very general. But it's all in one little book. Highly advise it though. Um, it's short of, you know, military um, you know, descriptions. It's it's more of a you know general history. But there are books devoted to, you know, like military battles of the, the Byzantines. But Anji and God. So yeah, there's a bit of lag right now. Because in a lot of online battles, it does happen. So it's just lagging a bit there. Whatever. So he gets closer. I'm going to start getting ready for this fight here. Because he's moving all of his troops up now. Do, 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 do. Dun, 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 dun. And... What do we got here? Yeah, um, his guys, they all have better, you know, upgrades than my guys. And I wanted to do that to, to show that, you know, the bulk of this Byzantine army wasn't very great. Like, it was a bunch of mercenary troops. So the troop quality was definitely low. That's why I did that. So there's a huge blob of Venetians coming. See it? Right in the distance there? So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to fight a grinding attritional battle in the town square. And my huge comfort is that my guys won't break anymore because we're in the town square. And I could not have fought this army any other way because I was already, you know, fighting at a disadvantage. And I'm going to save my... My more my more elite units when his guys get a little bit more you know stuck with my spears then I'll throw in my, my Varangians and my my Byzantine infantry. My infantry isn't that great, the Byzantine infantry, because there's no upgrades on them. But they're better than my than my spear militia, of course. So those are there he got his catapults right there. 
That's trouble. But because our guys are, you know, hugging each other this close, it's going to be dangerous for him to target, you know, any of my nearby units. So he's definitely going to go for, for my units who are farther back. So I'm going to be on the lookout for that. So he's still setting up his catapults. And the uh, scary thing about, ca about artillery in uh, Medieval 2 is that it's pretty accurate. And it's got a very f quick, f you know, rate of fire. Alright, so now I'm going to start tossing in my first unit of Varangian Guards. I'm going to try to break some of these uh, Venetians. So yeah, the bulk of the Venetian army would have been pretty lightly armored because they were, you know, Venetian marines. So they had to be lightly armored to, uh, to fight on those ships. So now he's got his, art his artillery firing. So I had to keep looking at what unit he's targeting. And if I try to go around that blob right there, it's going to be kind of dangerous for me because that would mean going out of the, the comfort zone of my, the town square. If I tried to outflank. So that's why I'm very hesitant in trying to, you know, go around this blob right now. Boom. That was a pretty good shot right there. Playing blank and he still hit my guys without hitting his own men, it looks like. Archers. So, uh, for a few seconds, I'm going to target the crew of, the, uh, of his artillery right there. Look at that shot. That one missed, looks like. So yeah, I'm slowly feeding in my, my reserves here. As I said, my guys won't break. So, you know, that's a huge relief. And his guys, even though they're, they're kind of winning, it, they're getting exhausted right now. So I'm using his exhaustion, you know, against him. So here's a nice close-up here. Byzantines versus Venetians. You can see the Franks are holding back right now, way back there. See that? And this is when my The Wars connection starts getting really uh, funky. I don't want to kick him because he still has uh, troops back there. So I'm going to play the waiting game. Not going to kick. So there. He got his connection back in order. But yeah, I'm going to start targeting his general right there. Try to assassinate his, uh, his crusading commander. That would be the Marquis... Bonifacio of Montferrat. So yeah, I'm sending in more guys to the mix. And as you guys know, I am a huge fan of you know, Byzantine history. When it comes to medieval times, the Byzantines are my, my favorite, um, you know, people to study about. So here I'm starting to look at my options of uh, going around the other streets there to get around this position here. Yeah, still targeting his uh, his horses. And look at that. That that really scared me. He had 60 units of dismounted knights right there. They were untouched. Like, at the time, I didn't know he had a fresh unit of dismounted knights right there. You know, I thought I, I, thought I bloodied the entire French army, but nope. These guys come waltzing in like the kings that they are. Bam! Look at that! That shot right there killed like 10 of my guys. That was in my archer unit. So I got my Varangian Guards. There's 29 in that unit that, that I've highlighted. And I'm starting to hit the flanks of, uh, of those spearmen of Venice. And you can see the rest of the... The French army is now moving forward here. They're going to they're gonna reinforce their, their Venetian buddies. 
because they see that this battle could go either way. So uh, basically, I'm doing the same thing as the French are. I'm I'm tossing in my reserves when I feel like it's going to be decisive. So I start to move these guys around the flanks here. Then I see these armored sergeants coming in. So I'm going to pull them back. I don't want these guys to be outflanked outside of the town square. They could break. So I'm going to pull them away. Even though they're being shot, I'd rather you know save them for later. So right there, one unit of Venetians routes. That's a very good sign for me. a very good sign. But look at the balance bar. I'm still I'm still outnumbered here. Our men are under attack. Varangian God. Right now my biggest unit of Varangians is at 32 men. And look at that big solid body of Venetian spears right there. It's time to worry guys because Yeah they're not breaking as I as I thought as I thought they would. So now I'm going to put these guys back into action. Now that his guys are committed, and all the French troops are committed, I'm going to send these guys around. And here comes uh, Wars, his connection's getting really, uh, really silly again. And again, I'm going to play the waiting game. I don't want to kick him. As long as he has troops, he's still the legitimate commander of those uh, troops right there, so definitely don't want to kick him. So yeah, this is the long um, internet thing that he had there, internet problem. But it finally went back to normal. So yeah, I see the that those uh, French troops are now tossed in, so now I'm going to start using my Varangian guards, even though they're outside the town square. I can't wait any longer. The situation's got to change. So I'm going to take my cav. I'm going to try to go around that little area. It appears to be open. I want to hit those archers. And then take out the archers and then outflank that big blob of Venetians. So I sent one of my units down that alley right there. I want to outflank. Those are my Latin cons. But, you know, I didn't properly scout this map out. And you're going to see, you know, what that failure meant to me. Failure to, you know, recon this map and the, uh, the planning of the city. So I'm going to run down those Venetian archers with my general. At least that's my plan. But you know, Venetian archers are pretty tough, actually. And my general is depleted. And that wasn't the greatest charge right there. So I can try to get out of that situation. Because I see some uh, some spears nearby. Do not want to get impaled? Not with my horses. So I'm going to go for the other archers. But over here with my Latin con, I thought I could go around. See that? But there's no, there's no way. Look, it's just blocked off. What kind of uh, city planning is that? So, that was a waste of precious uh, moments right there. So, I'm going to bring back my Latin Con. So, I did break through, managed to get to his Venetian archers, but as I said, their Venetian archers are tough and they're upgraded. And my guys are down to, what, 10 men right here. Oh, I'm sorry. That was my, that was my Latin Con unit. My general unit trying to go the other way. Sorry. Yeah, that's my general unit. They're the ones who went down the wrong alley. So I'm going to get out of this fight with the Venetians. I'm going to start outflanking, even though there's only seven horsemen in that battle. And I'm getting my general ready to pounce too. So I'm going to charge. See, see my Latin cons charging from behind? And there's one routing French flag right there. See it? There's, an, there's another routing flag. Those are Venetians now. What, three or four Venetian flags are starting to, to waver? Look at that. Beauty. And here, War says he thinks he lost connection. And I said, no, you're still here. Like, you can lose connection to GameSpy, but you can still be in the game. And there's more lag happening right here. See that? Pretty crazy. He's still in the game, though. I even told him he's still in the game. So tons of routing crusading flags and Venetians. That's his beauticity right there, guys. So all my guys are depleted, but they are still fighting like lions. 
There's a huge uh, unit of dismounted Shilveric Knights. They're down to 55. I still have my cab unit at 20. And I still have a Varangian unit at 23. That's that's enough to take down a uh, a solo dismounted Shilveric unit there. But he had missed his feet, the French guy. He should have just kept fighting. But our men are winning the battle and forging a worthy victory. So there's uh, two, uh, no, there's three Venetian units left, and they're just uh, spare militia. One's at 27, and they formed the Shieldtron. See, I kind of got impaled here with my horses. I thought the charge would just break them immediately, but it didn't. So I'm gonna pull them out of that that Shieldtron mess. I think it's Shieldtron. So I'm going to chase down those uh, dismounted uh, French knights right there. There's no hope of them coming back, but I just want to destroy them. Oh, that's definitely Shieldtron. See how they're in a all-around defensive mode right there? So yeah, for uh, 60 years or so, the, uh, the Latins controlled Constantinople. Very dark time for the Byzantines. And also a, also a dark chapter in uh, for the Crusaders too. Because you know they attacked these, these Christian cities. And the Pope even excommunicated them. Anyways, a good game to my opponents here in this battle. I hope you enjoyed this historical battle. The, uh, the Siege of Constantinople this of 1204. Victory that goes to only and I'll let you see the uh, results here. Very a bloody battle on both sides. And these are my survivors. Look at all that blood in there, in the town square. So I'll let you read the results. I'll let you look at my specific unit roster list here so you can see what each one did. Roll call. Alright. See you guys.